Today, we're going to be looking at the visitation scene and looking at how Luke's gospel portrays Mary as the Ark of the Covenant. So let's, in this first session, talk about Mary as or, or the Ark of the Covenant itself. What was the Ark of the Covenant? Basically, it was a large chest that was about four feet long, two and a half feet wide, and two and a half feet deep that was kept in the tabernacle. The tabernacle was that tent of meeting, that sanctuary that God instructed Moses and the Israelites to build at Mount Sinai. And it served as like a portable temple throughout the, the desert wanderings until they got to the Promised Land. And eventually, the Ark of the Covenant was moved from the tabernacle to the temple once they built uh, the structure in Jerusalem known as the temple. The Ark of the Covenant was put in the centermost sanctuary of the temple, the, the sanctuary known as the Holy of Holies. In fact, it was the Ark of the Covenant that made the Holy of Holies so holy. Well, what was it that was so holy about the Ark of the Covenant? I'd like to look at a few passages from Scripture that may shed light on that. If you could open up your Bibles and turn to the book of Hebrews, chapter 9. And there I want to look at Hebrews, chapter 9, verses 3 through 4. And we'll see here how Hebrews tells us that the Ark of the Covenant carried some of the most sacred items in Israel's history. And we'll have Kevin here read verses 3 through 4 for us in Hebrews chapter 9. And let's look at what those three items are. Behind the second curtain stood a tent called the Holy of Holies, having the golden, golden altar of incense and the, and the Ark of the Covenant covered on all sides with gold, which contained a golden urn holding the manna, and Aaron's, bud that, Aaron's rod that budded, and the tables of the covenant. So notice, the Ark of the Covenant, kept in the Holy of Holies in the temple, carries three important things. First of all, it carries a golden urn that, that was holding the manna. Remember the heavenly bread, the bread that came down from heaven to feed the Israelites in the desert. They had kept some of that heavenly bread and put it in the Ark of the Covenant. So it carried the manna. The second thing that it carried was Aaron's rod. Who was Aaron in, in Jewish history? Why was he so important? Aaron was the brother of Moses. He was the brother of Moses. And what role did he play in Israel? He was the first high priest for the nation of Israel. Okay, very good. He's the first high priest. So the Ark of the Covenant carries the rod of Aaron, a symbol for that great high priest priestly office. The, second, or the third thing that the Ark of the Covenant carried was the tables of the covenant. And what do you think that's an allusion to? What would be the tables of the covenant? Perhaps where they shared meals? Okay, it's not so much referring to an actual table. Think of it more like tablet. What would you think mm -hmm. if Ten I said the tablet of, of, of the covenant, the Ten Commandments? Excellent. So it, were, it would be referring to the Ten Commandments. So those are the three things the Ark of the Covenant carried according to Hebrews chapter 9, verses 3 and 4. The manna from the desert, the staff of the high priest Aaron, and the tablets of stone upon which had been written the Ten Commandments. But what made the Ark of the Covenant most holy wasn't these three things. It was, it was carried right above the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant carried the holy presence of God that the, the cloud of God's glory in the Old Testament, which was the visible manifestation of God's very presence, dwelt and hovered over the Ark of the Covenant. So the cloud of God's glory manifesting God's presence over the Ark of the Covenant. And that's what made the Ark most holy. But the last thing I want to share with you about the Ark of the Covenant of old is how it was used not only to be put in the center of the temple, to bring God's presence into the temple, but it was also used out on the battlefield. It was out used for warfare on several different occasions. One great story comes in the book of Joshua, chapter 6. As Israel is going into the Promised Land, they have to take over a city named, called Jericho. And God instructs the Israelites to go around the city for seven days. And on the seventh day, they are supposed to have the Levitical priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant and march around that city seven times in a big procession. It's like a liturgical procession going around Jericho. And the Ark of the Covenant's leading the way. And then they blow the trumpets, and you know the story, the walls come down. 
But the point of that story of putting the ark in front of this big procession before the, uh, before the walls fall down is to show us that it's God ultimately that's going to be defending the Israelites and protecting them. That they're going to need to rely more on God's power and God's presence and God's help than they will on their own military strength, their chariots and their swords. So, <clears throat> in summary, the Ark of the Covenant carried the jar of manna, the Ten Commandments, the staff of Aaron. Most of all, it carried the holy presence of God hovering above it in the form of a cloud, God's glory. But it was also used for battle. Those three things will help us later on to understand Mary's role when we see that she is the Ark of the Covenant. But what I'd like to do is now turn our attention to one of the most important journeys the Ark of the Covenant made. And that comes in 2 Samuel chapter 6. If we could turn back there to 2 Samuel chapter 6, and we'll look at one of the most important journeys ever made by the Ark of the Covenant. The context is this. David has been crowned king of all 12 tribes in 2 Samuel chapter 5. And then he goes to Jerusalem and takes Jerusalem uh, as his capital city. But he then orders the Ark of the Covenant to be brought into his capital city because he wants to emphasize uh, that this is not any ordinary political kingdom or military kingdom. Ultimately, Israel was called to be a kingdom of priests, a spiritual kingdom, a religious kingdom. So he wants uh, the Ark of the Covenant to be brought in the center of his very capital city, the Ark that carried God's presence. Let's read the story, and I want you to keep this in mind because we're going to see a number of points that will parallel a journey that Mary makes in the New Testament. Let's start off in 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 2. And if I could have, or verse 1 and 2. Jake, if you could read that for us, please. David again gathered all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. And David arose and went with all the people who were with him from Baal of Judah to bring up from there the ark of God, which is called by the name of the Lord of hosts, who sits enthroned on the cherubim. Okay, a couple things I want you to note is it's a, the text tells us that David arose. So David arose, and then he goes to Baal Judah. Underline that word. Baal Judah literally means the hill country of Judah. It's referring to the hill country of Judah. So note that David goes to the hill country of Judah, and he wants to bring up the ark uh, because he wants to bring it to Jerusalem. Then turn down to verses 9 through 11. And if I could have Tala read verses 9 through 11 for us, please. And David was afraid of the Lord that day, and he said, How can the ark of the Lord come to me? So David was not willing to take the ark of the Lord into the city of David. But David took it aside to the house of Obedidim, the Gittite. And the ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obedidim, the Gittite, three months. And the Lord blessed Obedidim and all his household. All right, a couple of the points I want you to focus in on here is, First of all, in verse 9, notice David's question. David says, how can the ark of the Lord come to me? So underline that. That'll be important as we work through uh, this theme and how it relates to Mary in a little while. But the other thing I want you to note is where David goes. Uh, David decides he's not ready to take the ark in yet. So instead, the ark is sent to another place. And where does it go? The house of Obedidim. Underline that in verse 10. The ark goes to the house of Obedidim. And the last detail I want you to note is how long does the ark remain at the house of Obedidim? Three months. For three months. So underline that. It, it stays at the house of Obedidim the Gittite for three months, and the Lord blesses his whole household because God is present there through the ark in the household. Then we come to verse 6. Uh, I'm sorry, chapter 6, verse 14, 15. And we'll go all the way down to 16. Uh, Amanda, could you read 14 through 16 for us, please? Mm -hmm. And David danced before the Lord with, his, with all his might. And David was girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the shout of a horn. As the ark of the Lord came into the city... Micah, daughter of Saul, looked out the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him with her heart. So after three months of remaining at the house of Obedidim, the ark is now being brought up to Jerusalem. And here David is described in verse 14 as dancing before the ark of the Lord. Note that in verse 14. 
He's rejoicing. There's like this great liturgical procession as the ark is coming into Jerusalem. He's dancing before the ark. And then in verse 15, it tells us that David uh, and all the house of Israel are shouting before the ark of the Lord. So they're, they're, they're praising God uh, before the God's presence in the ark. And then it says in verse 16 that, that they are leaping before the ark of the Lord. David is leaping. 